Okay, so we're going to get right into this. When we speak about being a partaker, right, there's quite a lot of things that we are promised that we are partakers of. In other words, that we can be um, sharing in that thing. All right, now, what does a partaker mean before I get into what the Bible says we are partaking in? The Bible says very clearly that we are partakers. But a partaker is a participant. In other words, if you partake in our supper, in our meal, you are a participant in the meal. As much as we get, you get too. And this is very important because when we understand God's heart and there are certain things that he says, you are partakers with me in the following, that means that there's certain things that God is going to give us that we are entitled to and that we can participate in, that we can be partnering in it. Basically, you are a sharer. You are an associate in it. Okay, so this is very important that people just use these terms lightly. We don't understand the impact of this. <coughs> Sorry. As we get into this, <coughs> excuse me, as we get into tonight's topic, you are going to see how that as you partake, as you share with what God has set aside for you, transformation comes through. Blessing comes through. All right, abundance starts flowing in your life because of what God has planned and established and got ready for you. So let's go and have a look. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6 is the first one. All right, and it says this, that we are partakers of the promise. Ephesians 3, 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel. Now, that is probably the biggest one that we have. Okay. The biggest thing is, is that you are partakers of the promise. What was the promise? The promise was eternal life. All right. The promise was Jesus Christ coming. Promise was that the Holy Spirit would live inside of you. And that's why the Bible says in Ephesians, not only are you partakers of the promise, but you are also co-heirs, which means you get an equal portion into the inheritance. You inherit things. So because of what Jesus Christ did for us, dying on the cross, he allowed us to be partakers of what was promised to the Jewish folk. It's really important that we get this. That what was promised to Israel is not just limited to them anymore. That we as Gentiles, a Gentile is anybody who's not an Israelite, we as Gentiles are now partakers of this promise. All right, you can read more about it in Galatians chapter 3, where it says, because of what Jesus Christ did, we are now um, part and engrafted into the promise of Abraham. So we are entitled to all of the blessing, all of the promises, everything that God had ever promised over um, from Abraham through the nation of Israel. We are entitled to those promises. We are connected to that. So when you know that you are partaking in the promise, know it was because of what Jesus Christ did. And because Jesus Christ died and rose again, he made a way so that we could get attached, connected, and be partakers and share in those promises. Okay, now you know those promises are huge. Those promises are awesome. And God wants us to realize the power of this. Okay, that we know that we are really getting into a place of incredible destiny. The second one... <coughs> is that we are partakers of grace. Philippians chapter 1 verse 7. Just as it uh, that it's right for me to think this of you all, because I have, I have you in my heart. Listen to this. Inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense, confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers with me of grace. You are all partakers with me of grace. Now, what does that mean? 
People don't understand grace. Grace is not mercy. All right, if somebody's done something wrong and we sit down and we say, listen, um, that you should deserve to get punished and you get let off, that's not grace. All right, that's mercy. Grace is where there is a supernatural ability on your life to fulfill a function. And a musician has got the grace of singing. A artist has the grace of artwork. A business person has a grace of business. A teacher has a grace of teaching. And so it carries on. The fivefold ministry have graces upon them to do what God called them to do. Now, the Bible says that we are now partakers of this grace. In other words, you are given supernatural abilities because of what Jesus Christ did. So not only are you now connected to the promise, you are connected to a supernatural flow to do something that you would not necessarily be able to do in the natural. There's a grace that flows on your life. And guess what? That grace is not the same for everyone. Okay? Not everybody is a plumber. Not everybody is an electrician. Not everybody is a pastor. We are all given different graces to fulfill what God has called us to do. And so, yeah, Paul saying that you are partakers with me of grace. All of us are partaking in a grace, right? That supernatural ability because we are connected to God. And as a believer, we are entitled to be connected to the partakers. <clears throat> Number three, we are partakers of the inheritance. I think this is quite important that we understand. Colossians 1.12 giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So because of what Jesus Christ has done, the Father has said it qualifies you now to be part of the inheritance. Whatever I give the Son, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> whatever I give the Son, you are entitled to the same inheritance. Whatever Jesus Christ gets, you are also going to be able to get as part of the inheritance. And so God says, because of what Jesus Christ has done, you are now qualified to be part of the inheritance. So when the world goes, right, and you're busy getting your inheritance, know that it's because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. What's amazing about these, these um, partaking is the following, is that you do not deserve it. It's not done by your works. It's done by the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did that got us connected and attached to this. Number four, we are partakers of a heavenly calling. Hebrews chapter three, verse one. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, Consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. You are partaking in a heavenly calling. In other words, there is a calling on every one of us, a supernatural, not a normal calling, a heavenly one that comes from heaven. It's a spiritual calling that comes on us. God calls each one of us to do something. And so many times we cut ourselves very short. Because what we do is we measure ourselves against the fivefold ministry, against the pastor, or against the preacher. And we think that that person's more spiritual than you. <clears throat> because God did not call me to stand up there and preach. Let me tell you something. If you're a mechanic and you can fix a car or create something, you are just as anointed and called as the preacher. You must understand God's calling on our lives is for different functions. Each one of us have got a function to fulfill and each one of us have got a different calling. So don't try and copy somebody else. Don't try and be somebody else and don't sit down and 
presume that you know what's going on in somebody else's life because you don't. And so this is why we need to get settled in this and say, God, I'm called to do what I'm called to do. And God will move you. If he's busy equipping you, he will move you to something that you need to do for a season and then something else and something else. The Bible is very clear that God will lead your footsteps and he'll guide you, lead you, direct you. This next one is the most awesome one for me. You are called to be a partaker in the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we are partakers of the Holy Spirit. We are partakers in the power of the Holy Spirit. We are partakers in the leading of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit leads, we partake in that. We are part of that. We are part when the Holy Spirit leads us somewhere. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit empowers us. The Holy Spirit fulfills what needs to be fulfilled in my life. But you are partakers. Once you have allowed the Holy Spirit into your life, you are a partaker. <clears throat> and you are going to be blessed and you are going to benefit in everything that you do. Number six, you are partaker in Christ's holiness. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10, for they indeed for a few days chastised us as seemed best to them. But for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. How many of you know that Jesus never sinned and he was holy? How do I become holy? Come on, we all mess up. We make mistakes. How on earth am I supposed to become holy? When I go before God every day and I say, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for his body that was broken and the blood that was shed. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of everything that I've done wrong. Immediately, I partake in the holiness. I'm standing there without a single, listen carefully, without a single Legit allegation against me. Why? Because I've been forgiven of everything. And so we, be take, we become partakers of His holiness. Where we want to serve God. Where we obey the word. And that we are not driven by sin. When you are genuinely, when you tap into holiness, you are not striving for sin. You are striving to serve the Lord and be obedient. And so we tap into this holiness. Number seven. We are partakers in Christ's suffering. 1 Peter. One Peter chapter four verse thirteen states the following: "But rejoice to the extent that you partake in Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, that you may also be glad with exceeding joy." What does that mean? It means that when I go through a hardship and people are persecuting me for the gospel because I'm a Christian then you must understand that I'm part of Christ's suffering. Like Christ suffered, I'm touching a part of it. I'll never have the full level of his suffering. But if I suffer a little part, that rejection, that hurt, that pain, that loneliness, then I'm partaking in it. But the Bible says that if I partake in the suffering, it says that his glory will be revealed. Now, what does it mean about this glory being revealed? The fullness of who God is, 
is going to start getting revealed in my life because I have touched a part that he had suffered. And so when you get persecuted, you must know that there is going to be a glory that's going to come through in your life. God has promised that when you partake in his suffering, you're also going to partake in his glory. And the fullness of what God is starts going manifesting in your body. The fullness of who he is starts shining through your eyes. And when you're going through that and you keep your heart pure, God says, there will be joy, but there will also be glory. And so I want you to understand that every one of these that we partake in has a massive blessing attached to it. It has a massive uh, abundance that comes with each one of these that we partake in. Now with everything in the gospel is always a price. But the price is worth it because there is a massive reward. There is a massive connection that comes with us. But this is probably one of the most ultimate that you can get. The next one is when I partake of God's glory. When I get a piece of that real glory, God in his fullness. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1, the elders who are among you I exhort, for I am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ. Listen to this. And also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. I want to show you something here. Yeah, we see Peter saying, listen, I've been part of the suffering. But I've been part, I've had a, a taste, a partaker of the glory that will still be revealed. The fullness is still coming. But I've had a part of this. I've had a touch of this. And so as we as believers start pushing in, okay, people are asking, what is the verse? 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 1. <clears throat> we are partakers of his glory, we are taking a part of the fullness of who God is. I want to ask you this. If we really are experiencing the fullness of God, do you think we'll ever be the same again? See, the problem is this. God promises these partakings, but we are not pushing in for them. Are you pushing in to say, God, I want to see your glory? God, I want to see the power of God in my life. You know, it's like when Moses was there in the cleft of the rock and he said, show me your glory. Show me who you are in your fullest extent. And God still said, you can't because if you, you'll die if you had to see my glory. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put my hand over you. I'm going to walk past and you're only going to see my back. That was enough for Moses to come down the mountain with such a glow on his face that he had to cover his face that people could not physically look on him. That was just a touch. Peter is saying, listen, I've been through the suffering. Now I'm touching a little bit of the glory. That's still going to be revealed when we see Jesus Christ come back in the fullness. Man, I'll tell you what, there's not going to be a, a discussion as to who's king of kings and lord of lords. All right. Everybody can say, I'm king of kings and lord of lords and big shots and whatever else. Wait until Jesus Christ rocks up on this earth in his fullness. Not as a man, not as a lamb, but coming as the lion. And you see the fullness of his glory and you are already able to partake of this. I want to challenge you to start getting hungry. Say, God, show me some of that power in my life. Show me who you are. Let me experience it so that I can be solidly secure in you. See, most Christians, they just walk through the earth, take whatever comes, and just hope for the best. Let me tell you something. I'm not like that. 
I want to get the most that I can out of this planet. Applying biblical principles and saying, God, I want to walk in victory, blessing and anointing. And then the last one is we are partakers of God's divine nature, his DNA. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly great precious promises. That through these promises you may be partakers of his divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world. I want to say something. You have the ability to be like Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 that we could actually become perfect. We are way off it. But if we take the promises and call on God, God says... That we can be partakers of his divine nature. In other words, just like he is in heaven, we could be like that already starting to live on earth. Can you imagine being in a place where you're not driven or caught up by sin all the time? But that you have a genuine flow and a desire to be with God and flow with God all the time. I want to tell you right now. We need to take, all right, these topics, these, these teachings that I did now. So let's see how many I went through. Nine of them. Take each one this week. Just take one a day. And so focus on it and say, God, I'm calling on. I want to be partakers of this in my life. God, help me to be a partaker. Let me experience that today. Let me get a revelation of that. And as you do that, you're going to start seeing a whole new element of who you are. Because God has promised that we could be partakers. And God's blessing is going to come upon us in Jesus' name. And so let us pray right now. Lord, right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for what you're doing in the body of Christ. Lord, I thank you what you're doing in each one of our lives. I ask you right now that we will not sell ourselves short. And Lord, that we will not push in for everything that you have promised us. Lord, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that as we stand together and come together, Lord, I pray that we are going to be partakers Lord, that we are not going to settle for second best and the riffraff. But Lord, that we are going to genuinely get the fullness of what you created us for. Lord, that we are going to walk on this earth with your blessing, anointing, prosperity and fire. Lord, I thank you right now that you will make this word so real to us. Lord, that we will just submit and serve you in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Well, folks, I want to bless you. I want to tell you that we just come back from a fire conference. It was amazing. All right. I'm telling you what, it was an amazing time. It was a blessed time. It was an anointed time. Lives were changed. People were set free and healed. But I want to just say tonight, if you want to study the word, if you want to get into the Word of God, I would encourage you to enroll in our college. Please go and enroll at gibiblecollege.com. You can enroll anytime. It's a four-year course, and we'll come right back to this place in four years' time. So I want to bless you. I want to commend you, and I want to say have a wonderful evening. I want to remind you that Pastor Les is on next. So quickly go get yourself a cup of coffee. If you've got any marshmallows, throw them in. And get ready for the next session. It's going to be absolutely powerful. Because he's going to be ministering on what happens in the millennium. Okay, so I want you to get ready. And from our side, God bless you.
Have a wonderful week. I'll see you tomorrow morning in communion. God bless. See you soon. Amen.